we'll go to the next session. I'd like to call upon uh, Dr. Krishna Prasad Kudlu, eminent uh, cataract refractive surgeon from Murpi, Dr. Moita Sharma. We are trying to get people who are involved in three basic platforms of uh, presbyopia laser surgery. And we have the same patient. We just tell them how they plan the patient on their machine. Dr. Moita Sharma comes from Delhi. She has her own clinic and she's been doing a lot of work on uh, Supracore. And you can come here. And uh, Dr. Amrish Darak, uh, again on Supracore. Dr. Kumar Doctor is here. Yeah, please, for the Presby Max. So basically, I ask a question to you and then you can help in planning. How do you plan a patient for presbyopia laser-based surgery? What's your indication? A quick answer so that without going too much into theory, you can stand in the center. I mean, that's better. So the, it's this, the patient which is put is the same patient. So patient uh, X here, female, with one or plus 1.75. This is the supracore planning. The one in the center is the Presby bond. The, the one on the other side is uh, the Schwinn Presby Mac. These are the only three available platforms in the world today. Maybe next year we'll have a platform from Alcon. They call it Reed. And uh, Professor Saylor, you can come here in front. The seat waiting for you. Welcome. You're the last to join us. <laughs> okay. So, what's your indication, Dr. Moita? We start with you. Uh, when you forget about this patient, when you choose somebody comes to you at 45 years, who's your best patient? Where you feel that this patient will do very well with uh, a presbyopia-based surgery. Okay. Uh, so the best patients for supracore, first and foremost, as for any uh, any press biopic surgery, is the patient has to be uh, the less fussy kinds. So we do a simulation test and check as to how the patient will actually accept the treatment by just putting a trial frame and putting lenses over it. So uh, whenever we do a supracore, there is a line loss of at least one line in the um, in the in the non-dominant eye. So we'll give a similar simulation and uh, simulate a potential blur. And th if the patient is accepting that, then we go in, go ahead with the supracore. Secondly, for near, this has a, um, all press biopia treatments, as you know, have slight compromises. So this corrects up to 1.75 to 2 diopters. So we'll simulate a, uh, with a trial frame where on the dominant eye, we would put 1.25 uh, and on the non-dominant non eye, we would put 1.75. And if the patient is happy with the reading, uh, then we go ahead with the supracore treatment. Secondly, the best patients are the hyperopic patients. So in fact, to start with, we started with hyperopic patients. So this... Uh, it's here. We okay. can bring it to the center. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so that uh, hyper, hyperopic, this is already a hyperopic patient as we can see. So this seems like a very good patient for supracore. Then certain other criteria we'll take, for example, we'll take the pupil size into consideration. It has to be at least 2.1 because this works on a principle of creating a multifocality on the cornea where the central bump is um, uh, responsible for the near vision and uh, from up to 3 millimeters and from 3 to 6 millimeters is responsible for distance vision. So there has to be a minimum, minimum pupil size. And, there, and, and the next thing that we look into is... Uh, Okay. The next thing that we look into is also, I'll read If you, as if per you the can list. come here, you can use the machine itself. Yeah. You can sit there and go to the machine and choose that what would be you better. You can sit so down. Should I talk about this patient? Yeah, yeah. You can talk about this patient. How would you plan this patient? This is a plus 1.75. She's a 45 year old. Okay. So this is the right eye. Uh, we'll have to check the which as to which eye is dominant. I'm assuming this, that this right eye is the uh, is dominant. the distant dominant eye. And uh, so in this, since this is the distant dominant eye, we will plan what is called the soft. Yeah. There are two types of supracores. One is a regular or a regular supracore, and the second is the mild or the soft supracore. In regular supracore, we correct up to 1.75, and in soft, we correct up to 1.25. So, since this, this, is, this is the distant dominant eye, we'll be planning a mild supracore. 
That and means uh, the patient will end up with a 0.5 of myopia in that eye? Yes. So you can change that also. You don't want a patient to end up with a 0.5, you can change it yeah, to… Yeah, we change the target to zero because we don't want a myopia in that eye okay. and this will be the eye which will be better for distance. So this, you can keep it zero then, right? Yeah. Yes. So we keep it zero now. Uh, what do you do? Go to the next eye. Left eye. Yeah. And now you go so to the… So left eye is again a hypermetro vegetation? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. So left eye is again a hypermetropic eye and this is the non-dominant eye. So we will make it better for near vision. So uh, uh, here uh, we are doing a regular supracore which will correct up to 1.75 to 2. So this is a better eye for near vision and the target that we have kept is minus 0 0.5. In fact, um, initially when we started, we were keeping a target of minus 0 0.75 because we wanted it to be even better for near, but then we found that there was a light, uh, there was a line loss of up to two lines in quite a few patients. So we changed the target to minus 0 0.25 and we found that the line loss is only one line. We expect a line loss of one line uh, in, in this, uh, uh, in this non-dominant eye. So that's the target that we are keeping. So, so why, if, a po if you keep a patient a myopia of only 0.25, do you think that patient will be able to give yes, you… Yes. Uh, so currently we have changed our parameters to this. We are keeping the target as only minus 0 0.25 and it's the supra core which is working. We are getting an N6 vision. With 0.75 the line loss was more. So we actually changed it to 0.25. Just ask uh, Dr. Darak Dr. here, he also does a lot of work on this. Do you have any difference in how you do it here? Yeah, two things I would differ basically. Uh, one thing is I'm seeing that patient is around 44, 45. So I would definitely ask that patient for his or her profession, one thing. And while doing supracore in this patient, probably right eye, I would like to keep an error of minus 0.5 there and offer a mild correction. If the patient is a computer profession, would you defer, would you change the… the then reading? probably, yes, in that case probably in right eye, I will do a mild supraco treatment with a target of minus 0.5 in uh, dominant eye and non-dominant eye, I would keep a target of minus 0.75 and do a regular treatment in that Basically, patient. you you adjust it according to the profession and… Uh, exactly. In the principle of this, I'm coming to the uh, Presby bond uh, with uh, Dr. Kudlu and Sri Ganesh, I'll ask them. But do you think there is also induction of uh, spherical aberration along with or is just induction of just pure myopia here? Yes, actually we had studied uh, uh, as to what the change in aberrations is because here we are creating a multifocality on the cornea. So we are expecting a change in aberrations. When we studied these change in aberrations, we found that at one month there was a significant increase in uh, vertical coma, vertical trefoil as well as spherical aberrations. But by three months we found that these became stable and in fact there was an increase in spherical aberration which remained which actually helped which is what Dr. Kudlu works on. So, so I will go to Dr. Kumar, doctor, then I'll come to Presby Bond later. Good if you use the same you. patient there, Can yeah. Can you talk about loss, Swing. loss Swing. in uh, vision? It is loss in uncorrected visual activity, yes, yes. right? Best Not corrected. the best corrected one. Best corrected. In the best yeah. corrected. There is one line loss in the loss best corrected visual best acuity in the uh, non-dominant. How is that Loss acceptable? is always best corrected. Sure. That's because so some rays are balance. also passing through the uh, near yeah, portion. Uh, there is a central yeah. bump and some rays are Swing. also passing Swing. through the near, near this is thing. From is best corrected contact lens, the best Hello. corrected… Uh, 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 Without glasses. contacts, with glasses. Um, we'll switch it in the center. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. It'll come. It'll Hello. Yeah, so… Uh, this is the same patient, Dr. Kumar? Yeah. Same patient, same refractive error. So, excellent results with hyperopia is what I have seen. I am not very happy with planos and astigmatics. So, this will do very, very well. Uh, you can see on the top, if you go, there is distance and near dominant and dis uh, distant dominant eye, you can check. Yes, so you know that. 
and then you go to the biospheric profile, you have micro monovision, you have hybrid and monocular and press by reversal. So if you can, actually it's a hyperopic patient, both right and left. What we have to select is, yes, you already selected Dr. the hybrid. Kumar, if you just, just briefly tell what these three things are because here we know regular means you go full correction, yes. mild means you go partial correction. So you, you tell what is micro monovision, hybrid and monocular. So, uh, in, this, in hyperopia, we'll correct uh, with hybrid. So, basically, it corrects distance and near, both. But the important fact is that there is a loss of distance vision by about a line. And it takes about two to three weeks uh, for the patient to get the distance vision clarity. And near vision is actually immediate. I, we did some patients last week and immediately after one hour. So, this is uh, uh, the way. Yes, press by max actually works. So you can see here in the first chart is about 0 0.9 and then 0 0.4 and then 0, 0. So this is a basic difference that you see. So you, by, by default, use hybrid as your choice? For hyperopia. For hyperopia. Yeah. But you said you only do hyperopia, yes. not hematropia. Yes. If you go to the next slide, say OK to this, Lace, femtolasic, click on femtolasic. No, no, femtolasic. Femtolasic, above. You have to feed in something, I guess. Because I want you to see this one important thing, then we'll discuss about Prispy Bond. The feature which, uh, because you see that, uh, I think even Supracore will also induce some amount of SA, spherical aberration, yes. that's why you give the depth. But what is interesting here is Schwind actually tells you how much it's inducing, if I'm right. Uh, you go to summary. Yes, and see that uh, there is a spherical aberration of around 0.2 diopters for the right yeah. eye. And just go to the left eye. Right eye is the dominant eye. And for left eye, it's a 0.41. Yes. You can actually, see if you go back to the, you just click on the monovision. You can, the basically what I'm trying to say is each different type of laser platform uses different level of aberration. If you go to the monovision, Go to this again, summary. And you can see that it becomes 0.50 it's diopters of SA. You go back to uh, bias, uh, you go back to something. Uh, there's a third one there, right? Monocular, you'll see a huge amount of SA out here. It will be much higher. So it will be close to uh, one. Yeah, 0.13. Point so it, for the left eye, left eye, this is the right eye. You can see that it's point, uh, four four nine. So, four nine. So what happens here is, I'm sure it's doing in uh, Supracore also, exactly the same thing. But one thing about that is it tells you exactly how much it's changing. Now, we go to uh, the Presby bond. And I, I you can just one question. It tells you exactly how much you're, it's going to induce. But is there a study which has measured as to how much it actually induces versus how, what is predicted? I don't Predicted so. versus achieved induction of spherical abrasion and you will find that it is not accurate at all. Absolutely. Professor Saylor, do you agree to this? Uh, you use this machine. Do you like this? I, I'm not using correct this way anymore. No, no. The, I want you to answer this question. <laughs> what the machine says is inducing, are we always getting what it says or it's no, we do not. Great. Clearly not. So we really don't have to worry about that. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Now we go to Presby Bond. Uh, we bring it in the center. You can come here. Then we'll discuss. Yeah. It's okay, right? We can talk there only. No, no, no. It's everybody can see. Yeah. Now the same patient, Dr. Kudlu and Dr. Sri Ganesh. Yeah, this particular uh, for, patient. 40, 45 years. This particular patient, first of all, when they come to my clinic, I would like to do a cycloplegic refraction. Sir, so all that is done. You yeah, cycloplegic All that refraction. is done, patient okay. is accepted. Right eye tolerance. is dominant. So, right eye dominant, uh, I don't want to change any setting in the machine. Normally, standard setting, what you can see, there is 1.5 test tolerance. So, since the 45 years old patient, I don't want to change any sort of, irrespective of whatever the profession, still I want to go ahead with the 1.5 tolerance test then go ahead with the treatment. But what I just want to say, 
uh, if suppose the patient uh, yesterday you are talk we all having that uh, talk about uh, uh, that made me more and more scared yest after yesterday's discussion that uh, amount of uh, uh, this much of hypermetropia especially in press band i don't know with the dr ganesh results my myopic results are fantastic like uh, 300 patient data out of that 60 percent myopic and 40 percent hypermetropic probably he once again i want the setting, these classical settings are same. We are not changing anything in the machine. Whatever the company has given, the only compare with the uh, Presby Max, we are not knowing how much is the spherical abrasion induced after the treatment. No, the question I want to ask is both the supra core tells you that you are going to create a 0 0.25, 0 0.5 myopia. Uh, Schwinn tells you that you are creating a 0 0.8 diopters of myopia. How much does Presby Bond in tell non -dom you? In non dominant eye, See, we make the dominant eye immetropic, make the non-dominant eye myopic by 1.5 diopters, along with the creation of spherical abrasion in both the dominant and the non-dominant eye. You want to differ on this? What about your, your eyes? How did you do it for your own eyes? Basically, you want to be emetropic in the distant eye. And if you are myopic in the distant eye, then the, the defocus, the myopic defocus causes more halos at night. The night vision is worse if you are myopic in the dominant eye. So ideally you should be emetropic or maybe slight plus 0.25. So I have a plus 0.25 in my right eye and I have 2010 vision. So that's, so that's, that's the principle. I mean, it's even with a multifocal, the other, the other uh, platforms say they create a multifocal cornea. Now a multifocal cornea is again something that you may create but it does not remain because the epithelium kind of compensates it smooths it over that's a natural mechanism of masking that happens so the multifocality does not remain the multifocality itself causes a lot of abrasions and uh, night vision disturbances I have press B max also I've done quite a few press B max and that's why you get loss of best corrected vision now patients become comfortable after three months because of the regression, healing, smoothening over, and you will see that the multifocality also has kind of reversed to some extent. We feel size is also very important in press B. No, but the question but is, is the principle of uh, making them myopic for distance. I don't really, uh, in the dominant, the dominant eye, I am not very happy with it because, again, the night vision problems would increase just like a multifocal IUL. But if, I'll ask. if you're multifocal IUL, you are a minus in a multifocal IUL, then this patient has more night vision problems, more halos. The question he wanted to ask is 1.5 in the non-dominant eye, making them... See, it's, it's not actually 1.5. No, when you actually sir, put it in the software, the if you put it in the software and you will see the correction, oh. if, if it is 1.75 with a 1.5 and, so it's not going to be, it's not going to be like a 3.25. It's going to be much less. So, Rohit, I can give an example. If you just put it in the software. I treated my husband at, when he was 46 years old, 46 and a half he was. And he was an immetrope 6 by 4 each eye. I uh, did a laser blinded vision, which is press beyond. And I induced a minus 1.25 in one of the eyes, along with putting the software profile in both. He was able to read in the dominant eye 6 by 4, he retained it. In the non-dominant eye, he was accepting a minus 1.25, but his uncorrected vision in the non-dominant eye for distance was 2040. So it wasn't 2060 or 2070 as we were expecting, it was 2040. And therefore, I think the blending occurs much better. Over a period record? of seven years, now he had regressed and I did a 0.5 diopter enhancement six months back. So it does regress. It didn't give a 1.5. It gave a 1.25 in the first I instance want to ask itself. The question. Uh, we, we have looked at the hyperopic correction, Dr. Moita first. If somebody comes with an emetro who just is 45, 46 and he wants reading glasses, have you ever tried the same thing on them and how would you do it? Let's assume that, keep it zero for this lady, please. Keep it zero, keep the hyperopia zero. Let's see how you, you manage and use the same thing for all the three machines. Hyperopia zero. 
keep that hypo no here, 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 here. Uh, Dr. Kumar says first already, I think. Okay, she's will make it zero. We can change it here only. Yes. Let's assume that she's not at hypermetrope. Okay, for a myopic patient again. Not uh, myopic. She's just a no, metrope. patient yeah. is immotropic. Oh, sorry. Uh, for a immotropic, I have yeah, like this patient, I have been doing uh, supracore. Uh, for such patients also. Only uh, the thing is that our uh, target will become absolutely zero in the non-dominant eye because these are the patients so you go to the mild who will one, not yeah. accept line loss. For them, uh, uh, so target has to be zero instead of 0.5 or 0.75 or 0.25, whichever we were taking. And so just to make the planning, the target is zero for the distant dominant. Yeah. And you go to uh, the left eye so, now. So rest is similar, mild rest supracore similar. in the right eye. So yeah. One thing about uh, this is, it is rigid, you can't play around with SA. I think tomorrow, whenever uh, Damien is free, he has his, his uh, paper is what is going to become the uh, basis of uh, Alcon's uh, presbyopia treatment and uh, about how he uses SA only to change the uh, Q and that is, that's going to be how the Alcon is coming out with their uh, read software. So sir, for you, if this is a metro patient, is there anything you do? How much would you induce for this patient? Uh, this particular patient, uh, uh, both the emetropic, uh, if uh, once again the 45 years old, no? If it is around 40, 41, I drop to 1.25, like how Rupal was telling. If the patient is around 50, 52, then I want to increase the addition for plus 1.75. Just to answer Dr. Mohan Rajan's question, what he is telling, with just making myopic of 1.5 adapters, is it really sufficient for the near vision? No, no, for the uh, distance. For uh, distance no, no, as Rupal said that, because of there is a, some amount of spherical abrasion in that particular eye, even if you do only mono vision, you expect them to have a 660 vision if you drop by 1.5. But because of this induction of spherical abrasion in the non-dominant eye, few of my patients even read up to 612 parts, even up to 69. You agree I, to this? I, I have minus 1.75. My uncorrected vision is 6 by 18. 6 by? 18. 6 by 18. In my left eye, so you have an increased depth of field. Otherwise, normally with a minus 1.75 myopia, you, you don't read 618. You would probably be reading 660 or 636 with 1.75. It's like adaptation. With and, and my near vision is J1 plus because it's like 1.75 and I have about one and a half adapters, increased depth of field, so it's almost equivalent to 3.25, so I can read up close. So there is definitely an effect and it is different from just doing a monovision. Rohit, Ro Ro I just want to hear it here. here. Uh, uh, yeah, no, my symphony patients, I do the micro monovision like this, okay? If I make them uh, minus 1.25, 1.5 myopic and the other eye and the vision drops to 618, 624, they're very unhappy, okay? I, that, that is the reason why I asked that question. So it's basically what the discussion is, it's just not induction of a myopia, not a monovision. These platforms, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, hidden inside is along with that how they induce the amount of SA to give you that depth of uh, focus. For example, of the two softwares, if uh, I click on Kumar's one, it will tell you exactly in both eyes yeah. how much. For example, let's go to the non-dominant non -do eye, go to the OD, uh, go to SA, same patient. Let's assume it uses the same principle. Say OK. Summary. So, without any correction, the patient is inducing up to, I don't know, I can't see it, 0.2 Point one. Point zero one. Point zero one of, uh, di In diopters, how much is it? Zero for distance. There's still amount of induction is there. I think it's because of that. And uh, smile, press bond when you look at the blend zone, it's about combination of induction of that myopia along with induction of uh, the SA. Am the I right? But in software, doesn't tell that how much is the induction of spherical abrasion. But it tells you on the you other... You can calculate if you want, pre-op and post-op. But it tells on but the... But the, the uh, uh, These two machines tells. And Kumar, sir, do you, if you want to do a, on a metrop here, how yes. would you plan of the three things? Micro-monovision and all this, 
you have to do monocular, so micro monovision, that's what you have to follow oh, yeah. as far so as... So you do only one eye. Let's go to monocular. Let's see how much it's going to induce. That's it. 0.87. So you can see that 0.87 is the amount of induction in that eye and it's not touching the other eye. So that's, that's a huge amount of... Non-dominant eye is doing... The non-dominant non -dominant eye. So, other question is, have you tried on patients post, I know Dr. Kumar has done, post cataract yes. IOL and the patient now wants uh, a reading. Yeah. Have you tried this on patient? Yes. So, I've done uh, single piece IOLs, foldable IOLs. Uh, as you know, it's, I had better results with uh, hyperopic patients and I did not have very good results with myopic patients. But it is good because they are able to read N8 quite comfortably. So that's what I have found. So pseudo fakic patients can undergo press biopic LASIK quite easily. And of course, you know that you have to keep a gap. But uh, I feel I had done this many years back, almost 10 years back. Over five years, again, there is some change happening. So it doesn't remain as what it is supposed to be. So that's my experience. And that's the reason why the old press by Max actually disappeared from the market and the new one that has entered into the market. So you can market. redo it whenever you want. You need to need to touch up. Seven years follow-up, we did the start, to start with the both the pseudo fakic press beyond. They're coming for follow-up. Till today, there is absolutely, there is no change in the power. And second one, what I want to add, some of the patient we have done seven years before, now came, since they have developed the diabetes, they came with cataract now. What to do now? So yeah. what we did, we had a lot of discussion with, I think even Tarak is also here. For uh, dominant eye, we made emetropic and non-dominant eye, we made myopic by 1.5 adapter. After doing that, still the, whatever the amount of spherical abrasion we induced in the, both the cornea, it was remaining and patient was very happy even after the cataract surgery. Because so, they are already uh, neuroadapted, so yes. it's much easier. I have done about three cases. So you, you make them cataract. more myopic then? You, 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 you aim for a myopia of around 1.5 no, to 1.5. you put them more, more myopic IOL. No, no. Yes. You use, you, you use a spherical uh, lens, a regular lens, not a negative aspheric lens like the technis. Aspheric. Aspheric. No, you, you don't use a, either you use a zero. Zero spheric zero, lens. Zero spheric abrasion or neutral. A, abrasion abrasion neutral, neutral lens. Or a positive spherical abrasion like sensor but not a negative aspheric lens. But, but you are saying you are targeting minus 1.5. In the non-dominant But you had done that which was also targeting minus 1.5. Yeah. So does it doesn't one point, become… 1.5 to minus 1.75 is what… So at the cornea have. plane you had targeted 1.5 when you did the press biopic correction. And then with the cataract… No, at the spectacle plane. Uh, spectacle it's plane. at the spectacle, spectacle. plane. Okay. At the spectacle plane that you target for 1.5, not at the cornea plane. Dr. Ramurthy. For more than a decade on patients who are 38 years or above, after significant discussion with them and understanding the requirements, we have been doing the concept of monovision, just plain minus 1.5 in the non-dominant eye. I am correcting completely for the dominant eye. And practically it seems to work quite well. All of you are talking about some amount of uh, uh, monovision, incorporating spherical aberration, which is uh, often regresses, the way it uh, remains over time, it's not totally predictable. Uh, but I think both for uh, intraocular lens implants as well as laser vision correction, uh, using monofocals when you're doing monovision concept per se itself works well. I do agree that the I with the minus 1.5, maybe 6 by 24, by practically these patients are quite comfortable. I've hardly had to reverse, I've not reversed even a single patient for correcting the error completely. Can so, I just uh, add to that, uh, especially if they are hyperopes, then it really works well because some amount of hyperprolicity is already occurring with increased depth of focus. Basically, to sum up from whatever we have discussed so far is all of us agree that the hyperopes do very well in, in this if you want to lo do a laser uh, blended vision. Uh, two is all, all the three machines have their own inherent strengths, they have their own inherent, inherent weakness. But like uh, Samresh uh, told yesterday, the dysfunctional lens uh, issues, the change in the lens density all start at this age also. They are all at 45, 46. If you have a perfect lens, a perfect accommodating one, I think it does very well compared to one where there is, where there is a weakness. 
And uh, if you are trying to do on emetropes, they have to be very prepared to have some amount of loss of uh, lives. I mean, for at least a few months till they neuro adapt. Uh, the principle of this works on just not monovision, it works on inducing aberrations. I'll ask Damien about this, about how change in the spherical aberration Q changes this. And uh, you doing on a post-operative post -operative monofocal lenses, patient wants near vision, and I think Dr. Kumar has done the largest work on this, is also an option. And if you want to do on Presby Max only <coughs> uh, near uh, monocular thing, then you do the monocular, but you should see that, that along with inducing myopia of around one diopter, one and a half diopters, the machine tells you that it's inducing 0.8 diopters of SA. I mean, I'm sure all this machine use the same principle, only thing they're not telling you what they're doing maybe. So, but Rohit, one the, of the whole concept of creating a multifocal cornea uh, something because I used Presby Max first. Yeah. And uh, what I saw with Presby Max is the loss of best corrected vision is can be quite high, up to 30 percent loss of more than one line of best corrected visual acuity, which was not very happy. I had to kind of review and decide what I wanted to get done for myself. So I, I looked at the literature, I looked at the technology, and then finally decided on this. Because if you look at the loss of best corrected vision with multifocality, that is quite high. And then it does not remain as it is. And the stereopsis um, with all the three pro all the three platforms. Yeah, the stereopsis. Uh, I don't know about the other platforms, but stereopsis with the uh, press beyond is quite good. Even though I have like a 1.75 difference between the eyes at 60 yards, uncorrected. Best corrected is 20. Even so contrast uh, also very good, no sir. Yeah, contrast is. Yeah. Uh, so uh, one point is uh, in specific <coughs> patients. I think the key point is what we do for the dominant eye. So, can we have an opinion from all the panelists, what actually you do? Do you, when you target ametropic, do you, at this moment, what is your, because each machine has each, like, uh, micro monovision, hybrid, and so on and so forth. So, from the panelists, in terms of only the dominant eye, would you just simply not do any presbyopic treatment, purely just refractive correction for that eye? Or would you just add a little bit of uh, spherical aberration and so forth? Can we okay. have... Uh, each of the panelists uh, yeah. giving uh, their Narin, present protocol. Quickly, quickly, if you can answer One once everybody. Narin, suppose patient is already having an existing spherical aberration in the cornea. What it does, it even reduces the spherical aberration. It counts. Suppose if he is already having a 0.55 spherical aberration, it reduces up to 0 0.37, 0 0.23. Only thing is our software, the only problem, it will not tell how much is it's inducing or how much it's reducing. But if you are having a system like you, you can calculate pre-op and post-op and tell. Still, it reduces in both the corneas. To answer what Naren asked, yes. the best uh, software, Tarak is here, I think, uh, if he's here around here, you know, uh, Zeiss and all other machines should also make it a little more, uh, you know, uh, we need to find out what is happening. Because if this is just a screenshot and we don't have anything, it becomes a little difficult. But Rohit, it does not correlate very well. What you want to induce and how much you induce, for so sometimes, not very good. Yeah, so sometimes what just you get is different. Yeah, sometimes keeping Probably it simple for the dominant eye, well. I think it's the key because uh, that is the one which patient no, finally zero. sees in the dominant eye and for driving, especially if it is the right dominant eye, it would be a very key factor. Left dominant eye, I think, is another completely b different ball game you, in you India you because can have the driving… Cross, about 20 percent of them have cross dominance. Yeah, again, which so in them, driving in India, I think, would be a little more challenging because the overtaking, everything happens on the right side and the uh, coming, uh, the opposite traffic also ha comes on the right side. So that's uh, a little more challenging to decide on those patients when the dominance is on the opposite side. In the end, Roy's concept, uh, after three months, neural adaptation only, whatever the technique you do. No, I want to Dr. Mohita and Amrish to just comment on this. This is one of our pa same patient. We did a supracore on this. I think the same patient. Is, do you think this is a decent result? You have a post-op here. She's uh, right eye is normal. She's reading N12. Intermediate and distance is 618 at this point of time. This is just uh, a week old. Do you think she'll get better? It doesn't look like a multifocal ablation at all. This is her ablation. This is supracore. supracore. So as you can see in the post-op period, there is a, a central steepening which has been created. Uh, 
there will always be some amount of, this is not a yeah. plano. You can see that there is plus two there. So she has induced th that amount of, so it's very difficult to really pick up, maybe in the center if you go to that EKR, we may have feel that it may be a little higher. What exactly was the treatment offered? This one, plus 1.5, plus 2. And supracore in both eyes, yes. mild or regular? Mild on the right and uh, regular on the left. Seems okay? Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to ask Damien about this. Uh, you know, you made that first paper of that mathematical, which was very complex for anybody to understand. Fortunately, Alcon understood it and they are bringing it out. That you use, you change the Q you change the essay and that's what Alcon is coming out as their model of uh, press biopia. Just want a quick comment on this before we end this session. Yes, the idea is to... Uh, you can come here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roy. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yes, so um, the... Uh, next, I think, uh, nomogram for press biopia correction is based on... Uh, the idea that um, if you have a negative aspericity in one eye, and if this eye has some myopia degree, you will have on the non-dominant eye some near vision, but because of the aspherization and the induction of a negative circular aberration, an increase in uncorrected distance vision. That is, you will achieve better distance correction without spectacles that you would have if you um, had like a blunt monovision. So this is done by selecting a shift in the Q value. The target Q should be more prolate, that is on average minus 0.6 from the initial value. That is if you have a minus 0.2 to start with, you target minus 0.8 and that would take care of the uh, optimal shift in the aspericity, which will in turn <coughs> induce the optimal desirable uh, spherical aberration for that level of multifocality. Uh, I mean, when uh, I saw that software, it looked very simple compared to all this. All you had to do was to change the queue. Do you think it's going to be so simple, Professor Saylor? Well, uh, you have to do things that you can do with the current um, software embodiment that is in the Alcon wavelight. It's only possible to modify the queue value. Yeah. I think initially we were doing this uh, um, this kind of surgery a bit empirically, but now we know more precisely what would be, for example, the desirable amount of circular aberration. So ideally, lasers should be corrected and enable the correction of a single mode of uh, circular aberration. Instead of modifying the queue, we should say, I would like circular aberration to be this postoperatively. And even beyond that, what we should try to maybe program in the laser would be, I want my patient to be Jagger 3 in uh, 2030 and <laughs> do everything you, which is needed. So maybe in the future with like machine learning, we will be able to get like optimal correction without any more input than the desired maybe uh, optical uh, visual co uh, acuity and the pre-op uh, refraction. Uh, Dr. Dr. Saylor, uh, he wants um, to, you know, maybe I'm not the best partner for this discussion because also we inaugurated that advanced monovision with a high Q factor or the high spherical aberration. I should tell you that during the last five years I gave up. The corner is just not the place to create multifocality because it's actually not very stable. Um, you know those patients coming in, uh, remember that we have from Houston that study that tells us that every happy patient brings you four new patients and where every unhappy patient uh, inhibits 16 to come in. You know, among those guys where we do breast POP correction, we have lots, after three years, lots of not satisfied patients. And that was the reason why I gave, uh, I gave up. Because I couldn't produce so many satisfied oh, patients to compensate that miss that, that misrelation between happy and unhappy patients. In addition, if you go to the literature, tell me one study that shows you a 10-year follow-up in those eyes. I do have 10-year follow-up, 
and the, and the correction disappears with time. They're coming back every second year and uh, later stuff to six to eight years <coughs> they're using reading glasses because they are sick and tired to squeeze the eyes all the time. But I believe you. there's a bias here because he, he lives in a German culture country. <laughs> so, uh, but, no, but seriously, it works well with hyperopes in our experience. Yeah. Of course, myopes don't like really multifocality, yeah. so it's that, always a case by case. That was the question I want to ask because when you're changing the Q value, you're making it hyperprolate. It's so much easier in hyperopes. But for myopes, if you want to have a hyperprolate cornea, then you have to remove a lot of tissue and it doesn't work very well. Whereas with plus beyond, I mean, the increased depth of field occurs both with positive and negative spherical abrasion. So either with positive or negative spherical abrasion, you have an increased depth of field. But you have a more you have more increased depth of field with a negative, negative spherical, spherical abrasion. abrasion. Uh, Doctor Damien, uh, just one question uh, from my side was uh, in in terms of changing Q in the right in the front. Yeah. So in terms of uh, when you look at the Q value, when we look at Indian nice being the pupil being very small, and uh, if at all we are planning to do after cataract surgery, which actually changes the pupil size furthermore by about maybe 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 uh, millimeters. So how do you think you're going to customize these Q, Q correction in terms of pupil size or? How do you customize yeah. Q to the pupil size? Well, currently we don't do that, but what, what we've noticed in some studies is that when the patient have larger pupil in mesopic condition, they tend to have a better uncorrected distant yeah. visual acuity on the non-dominant eye, which suggests that this is in fact effective. When they have small pupils, usually they have a better depth of field, so also you can maybe expect a better uh, range. Cube. So how would, how would you cube. refine your treatment in the, while you're doing the entry, would you actually enter the pupil size and that takes the data and accordingly Q value is adjusted in terms of treatment or how you does it cube, uh, change? Use the pupil to adjust the Q value or not? No, we don't do that. Okay. But long time ago with uh, Dimitri Aza from uh, Masai and Ear, we had worked on customizing multifocal treatments to pupil zones, and we have a patent with Harvard on that. But since then, every company we've been proposing this says, oh, it's too complicated. Doctors won't like it. We, we don't want that. So, <laughs> so I think post-cataract definitely is uh, pretty difficult, I think, because you're assessing pre-op, and post-operative, there could be changes. But I think if you do a corneal treatment, I think you'll have a much, the pupil size and how it varies would be more uh, post-surgery and pre-op should be kind of similar. So do you feel like in the future you might look at more of a pupil customized uh, Q treatments or do you think it's not a, actually a good option? I, mean, no, I think it would be a good option to customize because pupil is the entrance of the, key, the light that goes factor. in the eye and yeah. we know like in photography or in human vision there's like an influence of the pupil diameter on the visual performance, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, thank you. Rohit, Probably uh, that Q value thing, I am the best example. You operated me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we yeah. actually did manually yeah. that time. So today, even I am six nine and six. Because people don't recognize these are plano glasses. Do it. Plano glasses. Yeah. <laughs> How is this new uh, software from Alcon different from the FCAT treatment which we were doing on the wavelength? A little different. Uh, for that, you have to read his paper, which is impossible to understand. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you'll have to. He's here, so will probably help you with this. It's a beautiful paper, but he, I, he just has a graph which explains everything I'll share with you. Rohit, just one thing is we all discuss this patient's age as 45. Now let's presume the lens is normal and the patient's age becomes 52 and he's a hypero plus two for distance. Now how many of us will do press biopic LASIK and how many of us would do a clear lens extraction with a multifocal eye oil? Just a thought I want to know statistically. Just, you I, will see. I will do press by a big laser. How many of in this group have access to any of these three platforms and how many of you would do a press biopic surgery happily? It's a small number. Right. So that least majority of them would still because one of the biggest challenges of this is uh, agreed. One of the one of the things I would like to disagree from what Professor Saylor said is you all the are our pupil what Narin said are very small. You know, we are very forgiving in many ways. So results of what we get here and what we get uh, what we published may be sometimes different. So at the take home point at the end of all this discussion is it does have a role, but the role is definitely 
more in hypermetropia, but if you want to extend it for a uh, more more bigger role, then the definitive should probably look at an emetrope who is very, very clear of what he or she is getting. Thank you. Thank you.